And that's not the way we were supposed to play football, and that's not what we're all about. But we, we didn't uh, – we didn't play well yesterday, and I, I was embarrassed in how we played yesterday. The personnel is good enough, but the execution isn't good enough. We're not putting together a plan what, that's good enough for us to execute offensively because we're not executing it. So that, that, that kind of falls on the coaching staff on the offensive side of the ball. That was Chip Kelly speaking yesterday after the Eagles dropped to 0-2 this season. Kelly said there won't be any lineup changes despite the early struggles. NFL analyst Antonio Pierce joins us now. You know a thing or two about the NFC East, the Redskins, and you yeah. got a ring, of course, with the Giants. Good morning. Thanks yeah, good morning. for being Thank with you. us. Do you like the way Chip's handling these early struggles? Uh, do I like it? Uh, I think he's doing what any other coach would do in this situation. He's not trying to panic, trying to make it look like he has control over it. <laughs> but the matter of fact is he does not. And when you look at it, and the reason I say is because he has his hands on everything that's going on in this organization. He's the one that has decided to move on with certain players and bring in certain guys. He brought in a quarterback who we all feel, and I feel, I should say this, who I feel, shouldn't be a starter in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. Even going into the season before the 0-2 start in Sam Bradford. And he's shown why. He looks like a deer with headlights. He looks nervous. He looks, I, I would prefer Tim Tebow to go back in and at least give me some excitement. That's true. Because I know exactly what I'm going to get. This true. guy, I don't know what I'm going to get. Yeah, he's going play. And then you go and decide to take DeMarco Murray, one of the best running backs in the National Football League, and you run him sideline to sideline. Now, I might not be in the offense and not know when he needs to cut up, but just looking at the scheme of mm -hmm. what they're running with DeMarco Murray, when they decide to use DeMarco Murray in the games, it's a bad choice. It's going lateral. It's not downhill. When you take out two guards and you make your offensive line weak, but yet you bring in a high-powered running back, what are you saying to your team? Then you decide to have an offense that is going vertical, but with who? So when you look at this personnel, you're trying to say up-tempo, vertical, explosive, where? But then again, you had all your, your hands on each and every move. So to me, it's a little dumbfounding that you can sit there and say, uh, you're going to stay on course with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're going to be 0-3. I get it that he can go back to college football and go make the same amount of money that he's doing in the National Football League, but you're hurting your team by not making, the, by making bad decisions beforehand and sticking with Sam Bradford throughout the game. When you can look at that game and there was no confidence, not only in him, but the guys around him were saying, this is not the guy we need in the game right now. In other words, he's soft. Let's just call it what it is. Um, and that's something that I said yesterday, and I tweeted uh, while the game was going on, deer in headlights, because that's what I saw. He looked absolutely positively petrified. I never played football in my life. You understand me? I'm talking about other than playing around in the streets. I damn sure never put on a pad and a helmet, not with my, my, not with my skinny behind. Oh, absolutely not. I wasn't trying to be a football player. But even I knew. You know, you can smell blood. You know, you're a football player on that football field for the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday afternoon. You were like sharks in blood-infested waters. I'm talking about Sam Bradford was prime meat. It, 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 was just, it was just so obvious. It was alarming at how obvious it was. But I also look at Chip Kelly, and I think that ultimately the downfall of the Philadelphia Eagles will potentially be the arrogance of its head coach and de facto GM as yeah. opposed to the quarterback itself. And here is why. Sam Bradford showed me something in that second half against the Atlanta Falcons. He showed me that he could fling that football. He showed me that he could hit open targets. You look at a Jordan Matthews, you look at Aguilar, you look at, I ain't going to bring up Riley Cooper, but the Darren Sproles. The Dallas Cowboys played Darren Sproles effectively on Sunday. We understand that. But the other receivers, you don't know what they could do because Dallas was getting pressure on Sam Bradford because he was da he was dancing in the pocket like their late great Gregory Hines. God rest his soul. He was tap dancing like that when he could. In the end, though, I still point the finger at Chip Kelly because Deshaun Jackson is gone, because he got rid of nine players on both sides of the ball who are contributing for other teams immediately. There's a LaShawn McCoy, there's a Jeremy Macklin, there's a Harriman and a Mathis, okay, who are in Indian Denver respectively. Then you look at a guy like Trent Cole, he's gone. You look at some of these guys that they have, and you never hear a coach speak against continuity speak against experience, speak against doing things that are tried and proven to work. In the case of Chip Kelly, he seems to be a guy that goes against the premise that you've got to have talent to win on this level. His attitude is, no, my system is fine. Whatever you don't think is talent, 
will work in my system. It does not matter what history has shown about the NFL game. And I could be wrong because Chip Kelly is 10-6 and six over the first two seasons of his coaching career. But I simply don't look at a man who I believe is long for the NFL. Really? I think wow. that he's somebody that's destined to return to college mm. because all he sees is his way. And the NFL is a man's game. No matter how talented you are, and I know this because of my years of covering basketball, you can have talent. You can have talent, and that will elevate you. You got to have some toughness, but you can have talent, and that will elevate you. You could be the most talented dude in the NFL. If you will, once you get punched in the mouth, you are done. Because unlike the NBA and other sports, in the NFL, you have a license to assault people. You can't just have talent. You have to have toughness in order to succeed yep. in the NFL. And I question that about Sam Bradford, which is why I don't think the Eagles are going to. I, I, I've changed my position on the Eagles. I know they got the talent. I, I didn't believe that I would look at them and feel like they were soft. That's how I feel about them now. Not defensively. Offensively, I'm talking about. I love both your takes on this. I forgot to mention yesterday that my Cowboys committed a franchise record 18 penalties on mm -hmm. Sunday in Philly for 142 and yards. Didn't and, and, yeah. de and declined a 19th. One was declined, the 19th penalty, mm -hmm. and lost their starting quarterback mid-third quarter and still beat Chip Kelly 20 to 10 for the third straight time they beat Chip Kelly in Philadelphia. Can we just say 20 to 3? Because that last touch, that didn't was, really matter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I want to say 20 fair, to 3. I fair know. enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. So remember, as you point out, Chip Kelly won the power struggle. He became the, the GM as well as the head coach. This was his show and only his show. And it was clear he wanted to be the star of this show. And there was one week in the offseason. We came in here day after day, and it was bombshell after bombshell that Chip dropped in Philly. We're going to do this. We're not. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. And by the way, I'm trading Nick Foles for Sam Bradford. I'm no Bradford guy because I saw him. I'm a University of Oklahoma fan. He drove me crazy in college. The least bit of pressure, he folds. He's, he's not a physical pocket presence, and we're seeing it all over again. So it was just a, it was a bad idea. Okay. But we said back in the offseason, hey, Chip better be great this year, but but you got to give him a shot. Maybe he's maybe he is a genius. Maybe he knows gotta something we don't know. Let's give him a shot. Gotta give him a shot. So now they are facing O N three. Am I right about that? Yes. Yep. I mean, wouldn't we all think they're 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 looking right down the barrel of O N three? Jets. Okay. And so I. I, I don't think you can make the playoffs from 0-3. I could be wrong about that in the I NFC I think it was three teams that yeah. did it 25 yeah. years okay. or so. Are y'all ready for this? I'm sorry. Real quick. Go ahead, this man. is Steve Spurrier 13 years later, and I was a part of that 2002 You were. Staff. You know, you know, yeah. you know. Uh, Steve you Spurrier, it's this. I'm let saying me, Let me, let me, let me. Uh, uh, it's, it's in a question form because you know I don't know, so I'm right. just going to ask you. The only reason I question that is because Steve Spurrier was unapologetic about it. He had his tea time. He's going to play some golf. Yeah, He's going to yeah. chill out, whatever. I don't get that from Chip Kelly. I mean, Chip No, I'm Kelly... talking about as far as the personnel moves. Like, I got to give my guys it'll work. When we knew Danny Warfel couldn't throw a 10-yard out. <laughs> okay. We knew Jacquez Green, those guys couldn't play. <laughs> no, you know true. what I mean? Well, I'm talking about true. that. He brought his personnel. Right, right. We had all these guys from the... We let, the we let Stephen Davis go. Are y'all ready for this storyline for Sunday? You ready for this one? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you ahead of time what it's going to be. Mark Sanchez will go against the New York Jets. I'm not right, saying start. Right I'm not saying start. I'm saying he'll finish. Jets gonna get Sam Bradford out of there. Mm -hmm. You more no one way or another. I do not believe that Sam Bradford is gonna finish. Now I hope it's because I hope when I say that I hope it's because he's playing bad as yeah. opposed to getting hurt because I don't want him to get hurt. But I'm saying that defense. That we him. saw go after Andrew Luck. I just want to put it in perspective. Andrew Luck might be a turnover machine, mm -hmm. but he's talented, he's got heart, he's got promise, yeah. and he's a big boy. That's You're looking down. at Sam Bradford. You're talking about cats jumping at the bit. I, listen, I know Muhammad Wilkinson. His, his mama came up to me. I, w I went to the Jets mm -hmm. practice. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about when we were there. I'm talking about they had a scrimmage, you know, at, at Hofstra yep. just a few, a couple of weeks before the season. I went there with my family, Adam Schefter and all. We were sitting in the stands watching. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Wilkinson was there. His mama was there. 
Muhammad Wilkins is a big boy. Mm -hmm. That's a big boy. His, this dude is looking at Sam Bradford. He's going to see Sam Bradford <laughs> with, 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 with calves as thick as mine. And he's going to sit there and go like this. Oh, Lord, this is going to be a beautiful day. I just need to get to him. And that's the thing. The Dallas Cowboys is very, very interesting. You brought that up. Skip 18 penalties, 19th turned down. You know what the Dallas Cowboys are saying? Hell with the penalties. We're going to soften this brother up. That's what we're going to do. Am I lying? No. We're going to soften him up. If this is the Dallas Cowboys, we talk about the New York Jets here. Mm -hmm. You see that defense? The, the, the corners are like, we got you. They, Don't they worry do. about it. You just, just send the sink. I agree. Send the kitchen sink yeah. at them. I mean, I'm scared for Tim Bradford. Mm -hmm. I'm petrified for him. I, I, I'm trying to tell you, he ain't finishing that game. Mm. Chip Kelly gonna pull him. One way or the other. Chip yeah. Kelly, one yep. way or the other, and I'm hoping he don't get hurt. I want to emphasize that, because I'm serious. This ain't a joke to me. I, I think he's in trouble. Mm. I'm really hopeful that he just gets yanked because he's unproductive. Because yep. I think the Jets gonna get him out of there. I really do. We shall see. Mm. It's about to be October, guys, the best month in sports. If you were going against it, wouldn't you be salivating? Boom. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Talk a little NBA coming up, gentlemen. Only seven days until the start of NBA training camp, but a whopping $14 million stand between Tristan Thompson and the Cavs. Will they get it done? We'll discuss that after the break.